Next one here is from JT. Hey, JT. Uh, oh, this is a good one for anybody doing uh, 3D printing. This is a 3D printer one that I think is really good. Um, all right, this is from JT. He says, I have been uh, scratching your videos. Now that he found a video by a guy named Adam James, and you should definitely go and check out Adam James. So let me just go back here. Let's open up a new file. And uh, Adam James, so that is his, uh, his YouTube channel, Adam James. Maybe search SnapFit Infusion 360. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, people love this. I don't know why he got three uh, that is not deserved. Uh, James, if you're watching this, absolutely superb. superb. Uh, but he's talking about making kind of a snap fit on this model for 3D printing. So again, you should go and check out this YouTube channel. Check out this video. Great job, Adam. If you're watching these videos, man, that is an awesome. Love to see more stuff from you. Uh, but uh, the one that JT is talking about that is different from this is doing this on a cylinder. Huh. Um, because the way that Adam does it is probably the way I would do it too is uh, projecting uh, some edges and uh, just using the extrude function. But since you now are going from a square box to a round cylinder, JT... I don't blame you for struggling. Let's go in and do some. Uh, let's go in and do some three D printing here. Uh, so, let's make a canister first. So I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna make this a multi body kind of part. Um, so I'm gonna right click here and uh, and do a. Uh, and this would actually also answer I think Justin's um, question. So I'm gonna create a new component. And in this one here, I am going to open up a sketch, and it's gonna be a cylinder. So let's make something that is, I don't know, 100 millimeters in diameter. Let's extrude this up. Um, so we're gonna make this fancy cylinder in here. Let's make it 200 millimeters tall. And uh, I'm gonna use the shell command to make this a, uh, a cylinder here, 10 millimeters in, uh, in cylinder like this. Now, um, this, since this is gonna be a cylinder that we're gonna be be using, we're gonna add some fillets later on. But this is the, the first one. Now we're gonna create a lid for this, and there's gonna be this snap fit lid in here. So I'm gonna create a new component. Oh, let's just rename this. Call this base. Let's right click and say new component and make this lid. Okay. And uh, we're gonna open up a new sketch and let's do this lid up here. Now I'm gonna hit P for project. And I'm gonna borrow uh, that uh, that edge there for for my lid. Now, um, in Adam's video, Adam is talking about he likes a tolerance about a half a millimeter on on his uh, 3D printer. So I'm actually gonna emulate that uh, in here. So I'm gonna hit O for offset, and I am going to add in a half a millimeter in here. This really depends on what your what your printer uh, is into. And I am actually going to do another offset for the outside of the lids. Again, um, and you can't offset the uh, an offset of offsets. I'm going to have to select the inside edge here. Oops, hang on. What did I do? O for offset. And make sure we get the right edge. And I'm going to do the outside of the lid. Let's do that a 10 millimeter lid right there. Now, just to make sure there's no confusion. I am going to hit Q for press pull, and I'm gonna make sure that I select that outer edge there, and I'm gonna make our tab down here. Now, I don't know how long we're gonna make this cover that goes over here, um, but I'm gonna make it 20 millimeters, like that. And then I'm still in the component lid. I'm actually gonna do another extrude, and I'm gonna select that inside uh, platform we had in here. We should actually be able to select the whole thing here. Go the other way out. Oh, maybe not. Uh, let's open a new sketch. Select here and let's hit P for project. Select that one. We can definitely do that. Hit Q and then I'm just going to give this some thickness here and these will merge together if i have joined so let's just make the lid maybe five millimeters thick 
Okay, so that all became became one. So what do we have now? <laughs> this was a lot of stuff. We have a base uh, here, right? So that's the base. We have the lid going over here, and then we have we put it together. We kind of had this lid. Now we should have uh, a gap in there. If you go in and say um, inspect, there's something talking about a 3D mouse. It's moving, uh, and let's do a, see how it's moved. The part is rolling on the screen. That's annoying. Section analysis, and uh, let's just turn the audio on, and let's do a section out here, and I should definitely see a gap in here. Okay, good. There is a gap. All right. Uh, now, drives me nuts. Nuts. Uh, we can turn the analysis on. Now we're actually gonna do uh, the. We're gonna do the the. Um, what are we calling it again? The snap fit, and I'm gonna do that on the base first. I'm gonna activate the base. And uh, I am going to open a sketch on the side view here. We're going to use Revolve. Again, remember that what we're trying to do here is actually um, a, uh, a, a snap ring. So we can't project. We're going to do the Revolve. So I'm going to hit P for project. And I'm just going to select, I'm not going to select that top component. I'm going to type a little. I'm going to select that. Um, and let's dry, dr draw up our snap fitting. So I'm gonna go ahead here on the sign here and I'm just gonna draw up something that's gonna be my snap fitting right there and close that off. Um, and uh, let's make sure that this here is somewhere like that. Let's do this. Um, and uh, in I'm gonna hit alpha line. I'm gonna find the midpoint here. Wow, that mouse really annoys me that it's that it's moving on me. I wanna hold it. I can't hold my hand on it. Um, and then we could do a um, relationship to that. D for dimension. Now again, Adam did this as a uh, 45 degree for his, uh, and we probably just have to make sure that we don't make this too long. Um, so let's just make this 10 and D for dimension eight maybe. Like this, is this good? I think this is good. Let's turn the lid back on. You can kind of see the lid sitting there. Maybe we actually want it to be kind of like a little bit more center. So we could just play with this dimension here. Let's make it 15. Where's the lid now? That's good enough. That's good enough for us. Uh, so now, I am going to go into the Revolve, and we're going to select this profile here, and it's going to be over the center dimension of that. So now we have uh, this this lid here, right? Turn the top lid on, and actually you could do something pretty cool here if you haven't done this before. We could go into Inspect, and you could do an interference. And if we select the two components, like this and click the little compute. Yep, it actually sees here that, oops. Interfere this body. Compute. I don't know why I'm not showing up in red again, but it actually finds that, um, that interference. Now here's what I would do. Uh, that I think that some people is going to find interesting is I would use the combine tool. I would set this to jaw, uh, to cut. My target body is going to be the lid, right? Um, ooh, I definitely have a issue with, uh, I don't see the graphic representation. Um, and the, the, this is going to make this a little harder. The tool body is going to be this. Oh, now it's selecting it. Okay. Um, and I'm going to say, Key tools, hit OK. Now what I got, if I just turn the base off, is you will see that I actually have that ring in there. And if we turn this section analysis back on, you will also see that we have that ring in there. But you will see in here that we have the clearance, but we don't have the clearance on the lit, or on the snap fit yet. So uh, that is a little bit uh, of a problem. Um, so let's go in and fix that. I'm going to turn my section analysis off again. I'm actually just going to go into the lid, right? 
And uh, if we go in here, we can actually just select the face. And if we hit Q, we can actually start adding or offsetting these faces. So I'm just gonna go minus 0.5 on one face, go up to the other 45 there, hit Q, and I'm gonna go minus 0.5. And just like that, I have offset those two phases out 0.5. So if we go back into our base again, and let's go in and turn the, the section analysis back on, you will now see that we have that half uh, millimeter of, um, half millimeter of, um, of clearance. Uh, so, the last thing we would do on this model is let's uh, get out of the section analysis is let's add uh, some, actually you can either add some chamfers or some fillets. I would probably add some chamfers to this part. So let's try a one uh, millimeter chamfer to that would probably be good um, right there just to make that look nice. Um, and let's do that to the other end too, just because um, that, Makes sense. Repeat chamfer one millimeter to that. Gonna drive me nuts with these um, <laughs> with uh, this mouse moving. I can't work without it though. Okay, um, and then I would add some fillets to um, to this. So I'll probably add a small little fillet here. Let's try 0.5. That's kind of like our clearance. Remember that one. Um, and then I would add another fillet to this one here. Maybe make that one. How does it look at two? Oh, two. Uh, one. Okay. And then let's go back into the lid and let's do the same thing to this. Now, um, I would definitely make sure that I added a, uh, a chamfer on this one. And uh, this one should definitely minimum be one. Um, I might even consider how does it look at two? Because that could that would help that thing uh, going on there. And then we can go back into our fillet. And this one here, we make that one. One also. And this is more... Actually, you know, the only reason I would probably add a fillet in here would probably do... Um, to do a little bit of... Uh, of um, to do a little bit of clearance... Um, but actually, you know what, I might only, uh, to, to do some strength, but I might actually make that one a little bit less because I know that this is where the printer is going to struggle the most with, uh, with that, with that clearance. If we do that and we turn this back on here, I should actually also add, I also want a, let's just go back to the lid here. Uh, let's add a, um chamfer on here and here and make that one and in here we should absolutely also add uh, a little bit of strength that's why we're putting the fillets in it's just for strength now we've done all that let's uh, turn the base back on and uh, let's go in here and do a, um, the analysis this is your best friend at this point to so just go in and take a look and just see how we have all these different clearances in here. Uh, so that looks good. And of course, turn the analysis back on, you could go back in and use that interference tool to highlight these two. Don't, if you have included coincidence, you will see an interference on where they're touching on top. But here you will see no inferences. And this would be a perfect good model for this snap fit. Now, I would maybe consider doing another thing, guys, and that would be if you look at turning the lid off. This might this would be something to play around with. This snap fit um, really has a lot of area to snap over, right? Uh, the more area you have because it's round, you might consider. Um, to be a little bit creative. And what I mean by that is just to be a little bit advanced. You might go in here on the bottom and decide to cut away uh, some of these. 
So what I maybe would consider doing is to do something uh, like this here, I think. I would probably go in here and create um, something that looks... Um, what am I trying to do? I would do this. Hang on. Delete that. I would create something deep that I mentioned. I don't know what I'm trying to do. <laughs> 60. Let's create a, um, a line that goes out like this. D for dimension. And let's make this 60 degrees. And um, let's also D for dimension. Also make that 60. Let's create a, um, now I am modeling on my feet here. Do that there. P for project. And let's go in and make sure we, we get uh, one of these edges. What is, let's turn the, I don't have the lid on. So this here, I think. Like that. Let's do a cut. Let's cut this through here, right? So we kind of are cutting that. And uh, if we go in and we do, wow, it's annoying that that part is moving on me. I might have to uh, abandon this and, and, and go in. <laughs> the, let's go in here. Let's do a Feature, I'm going to select that feature, select an axis, going to be that Z axis there. Um, and uh, if we did three of these, then you would end up getting three of these. This might help you cutting this down. You maybe have seen something like this done before. Now you could now uh, also add, you would go in here and add some more. I would probably prefer uh, the chamfers on here uh, versus the fillet. But if you go in and do the fillet here, 0.5 and that, that would probably be good. Let's add another edges on this. I'm sorry that my 3D connection mouse is moving on me, what makes it a little hard. And let's make these also 0.5. I think that was all of them. There we go. That I think should be a, uh, a super good uh, snap fit uh, for this. What I'm actually gonna do here, um, and this was for JT, I'm actually gonna save this file. I'm gonna call this one JT. Uh, so we make sure we have that one. And now my part stopped moving. And uh, then I'm just going to uh, quickly answer um, Justin's uh, question is when you have multiple files here, if I wanted to uh, get this into a 3D printer like this, how would I get multiple parts like we have in here uh, into, uh, into the 3D printer? And the best way to do that is uh, right click, say save as STL. Okay, and that's going to open up this dialog. You can say save it out at individual files. And then I'm just going to select the whole thing here. You can actually also select over here, I believe. Select them all. And uh, I'm going to select them like this. Hit save. Let's save this to STL JT version 1. Call it 3D print. Like this, hit save. It's gonna work like this. And now if we open up our downloads folder, you will see that we have uh, these files here. And uh, heck, while we at it, let's open up the Cura because people's gonna ask me about this. <laughs> I've asked like five questions and uh, we almost, we already an hour. Um, <laughs> this is going, this is going uh, typical. All right, hang on. I should have opened up Cura, uh, first. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. 
cure is firing up. That is the, the cure here. Um, so now we can go and say open file. Let's open up one of them. Oh, that was a little big on my, my 3D printer, huh? Um, and let's go ahead and open up the second one. So that comes in there. Now I am not a Cura master, uh, but let's go ahead here. Make sure we get these two in on the folder there. Now I would think uh, you tell me wrong. Um, we probably want to do it. We probably want to flip this one around, right? Now this. Now I 3D printer people is gonna be it's gonna be yelling at me right now. Okay, so that is good. Um, if I just spin this around, I'm within my build envelope. I can see that. Um, do I need support material uh, to uh, to print this up? I actually don't think I do. Um, so we set the infilter to, I'm going to turn off support. You can see support is not in here. I believe this is a layer height of maybe one. Let's hit slice. This is when, um, I am in my, not in my comfort zone with 3d printing, but hopefully somebody's looking at this right now and find this one, uh, super, super useful. So we're going to slice this. And I'm a little bit afraid about how long this is going to take to do. But you know what? I'm going to run this. Um, I'm going to run this and hope that the 45 degrees, it's going to take two days to do this. Do I really want support material to do that 45 degrees? Does that, is that needed? Because the problem I think I have, and I could probably, somebody correct me, but if I turn the, the extruder 2 on and slice this, I think this is going to take a lot longer to do um, because that is going to go in. I really want to do this size, though. Um, it's going to go in and do this. And I think it's going to put support material anywhere. And I don't know how to fix that because I haven't played enough with the Cura settings. But I might just also just bite the apple and do it all in... Uh, with the support material and then have to uh, to deal with the fact that it's going to take eight days to do this. Um, though that I'm leaving for the Fusion Academy. See, it's going to take an extra day to do the support material. The preview here, it's going to mean it's going to put support material everywhere, right? Inside that core cavity. What do you guys think? See, do I really need support material to do this? To do that 45, guys? Is that needed? Somebody's commenting right now. So the right thing to do would probably to not print both of them right now and just print the lid and find out if I need the support material or not. That is probably what I would do. Um, I would bite the apple. Bite the apple? Is that what you say? Um, in here. And say prepare this model here. Let's remove that. And if we're just trying this without the support. Because if we can do it without the support material on this one. See, this is only going to take 13 hours. Um, then... Um, then I know I could also scale this down, right? Uh, you could also chop one of these in half. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bite the, the bullet on this and say, let's just print this over the network without a, without support material. And I learned my lesson and I don't waste all the, all the different, um, uh, all the different material. Was this useful? This one is saying that it's ready. It's getting ready. <sighs> okay, maybe this got a little bit too long. I'm sorry, JT, if it did. Uh, hope I showed some really cool things. 
we'll see how this come out. I will print this one, um, but I'm I'm actually not going to be able to show you the second one because I'm I'm traveling, which is going to take three days. I'm leaving too. All right, we're gonna end this. We're gonna end this segment right here. If you like uh, this, thumbs up. If you don't, that's okay. Thumbs down. Uh, we're over an hour, but I'm gonna have to take uh, a couple of more here. So subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, I would truly appreciate if you subscribe to the channel.